Hello, I'm Koshik Ghosh from Seven Bridges, and today I will talk about how we write portable CWL. CWL has a promise, and the promise is that it's going to be portable. You can write a CWL workflow and test it on one executor, such as the CWL tool reference runner, and you can take the same CWL without modifications and run it on another runner, such as Toil, or on a platform, a cloud platform, such as Seven Bridges. In reality, when you have multiple executors, you do run into problems. Different executors may interpret the specification differently. They may have different bugs, or they may have different affordances. For example, here are a list of six things that I found that differed between the Seven Bridges Platform Executor and CWL Tool while I was doing some work where I had to run CWL documents on both Seven Bridges Platform as well as CWL Tool. On the Seven Bridges side, for example, there is a bug where the backslash dollar escape does not work. This, of course, works in CWL Tool as the specification allows. On Seven Bridges Platform, the JavaScript evaluator allows reserved JavaScript keywords, such as argument, as variables. CWL tool does not allow this. The Seven Bridges platform doesn't allow port names with dots in them, while CWL tool does. In CWL tool, I discovered that if an app's ID looks like an URI, which is often, often present in, in some in apps developed in Seven Bridges platform, CWL tool will try to to interpret linked, linked processes as belonging to that base ID. In CWL tool, line continuations in bash scripts are not handled properly. CWL tool until recently had a bug where quotes and return strings were not handled correctly. This was reported and fixed uh, just before this talk was made. The inconsistencies between executors may be pragmatic. For example, the Seven Bridges executor allows people to use JavaScript 6 plus as well as ECMAScript 5. JavaScript 6 has more modern construct and is more comfortable to use. Seven Bridges editor warns users about this, but the stack allows execution. In the Seven Bridges executor, outputs that are a list that go into a step where the inputs are scalar are allowed and vice versa. This saves users from having to work with value from expressions. The Seven Bridges editor warns users, but the stack allows execution. These become issues when users have to run the CWL off platform on stricter executors like CWL tool. This is not a problem specific to CWL. Any standard that has multiple implementations will always have, in practice, variations in the coverage and sometimes behavior of the implementation. For example, there are many browsers, and for this reason we have something called an ACID test that allows us to test whether a given browser covers how much of, of, a, of the HTML specification a given browser interprets and interprets correctly. Compilers similarly have different coverages. This is a table taken from a website of the C++ C++ specification that lists the coverage of different, different compilers of different C++ features. As, as you can see, not all compilers support all C++ features. A pragmatic solution to the problem of writing CWL such that it runs on multiple platforms without problems is simply to test CWL on multiple platforms as you develop it. This is very similar to writing portable C++, where you would write, you would probably develop C++ on one machine, such as your Mac, and then test it on other platforms, such as Linux and Windows. To start with, we should collect small data sets. I have found that this can be the hardest path, part for bioinformatics applications. After you've collected small data sets, you should build a test suite, which tests different aspects of the CWL that you are developing. Once you have the da data set and the test suite, you should write your CWL and then test it simultaneously on multiple platforms. In my case, I was testing on CWL tool and, and the Seven Bridges platform simultaneously. In practice, testing on more than one platform usually works very nicely and can be extended. 
For this purpose, it is very advantage advantageous to use continuous integration to take away the burden of having to manually run tests and test cases. In general, after you run your CWL on one or more platforms, you should ask the question, did, did the tests pass? If they passed on all platforms, there are no problems with the CWL, or, and you're not running into bugs in any of the executors, and you can commit the version and continue working. If, however, you run into a problem on one or more of your platforms that you're testing on, you should ask the question, is the CWL okay? If the CWL is not okay, then you should go back and fix the CWL, which goes without saying. An interesting question arises, if the test passes on one platform and fails another platform, and you discover that the CWL is incorrect, then you have uncovered a bug on one or the other platform and you should report these bugs. The next process is if you find that the CWL you have written is correct according to the specification as best as you can understand it, and it passes on one of the platforms, but not on the other, then you have to find a way to write, rewrite the CWL so that it passes on both platforms. And of course, you should open a support ticket or an issue based on which platform was failing your correct CWL. The task of writing CWL so that it passes on both platforms can be annoying, but in the end, in my experience, I've always found a way to write CWL simply where it runs on both CWL tool and on the Seven Bridges platform executor. So in short, some pragmatic practices to ensure that you run portable CWL, so you create portable CWL, is to collect a small test data, build a test suite, ideally a small a set of small tests that checks different aspects of the workflow, use version control, for example, Git, and use some sort of continuous integration, for example, GitHub Actions, that allow you to trigger test runs on multiple platforms with each each commit automatically. GitHub Actions also allow you to store secrets such, such as API tokens that you may need to trigger test runs on a target platform that is not a local runner like CWL tool. Long-term solutions are to deepen conformance tests, widen, widen and deepen the conformance tests, clarify any ambiguities in the specification, and also to publish a CWL conformance matrix like that available for C++ that allows people to identify parts of CWL that they would like to avoid if they know they're going to be running on a platform that doesn't support those aspects of CWL. Next, I want to change to something a little bit different. I want to give a quick update on Rabix Benton. In case you don't know about Rabix Benton, it's a language server for the common workflow language. It is a plugin that can be attached to any editor and that enables code intelligence features for CWL. In this screenshot, you see Benton running with v VS Code and provides a bunch of, bunch of interesting and useful code intelligence features. For example, it offers syntax highlighting both for CWL and for JavaScript. It offers uh, to evaluate expressions on hover using synthetic synthetically generated inputs. There are file path completions for linked files in, in the run field. It will offer to do port completions for you in workflows. It will offer to do, it will supply you with port validations flagging incorrect ports. Uh, if you right click on a run field on a linked file and click go to definition, it will open the linked file in a new tab. Because it is a language server, it works with a variety of editors. In this case, here is a screenshot of Benton running with the VI editor. Since 2019, which was the last time uh, there was a talk on Rabix Benton, there have been a number of updates. For one, we, have, we now have CWL 1.2 support. We also have format document by, by the CWL format program. And we have CWL documentation on hover. So if you hover over a CWL keyword or a CWL field, the documentation from the specification will, will pop up. Also now, thanks to a contribution from Peter Amstutz, we have auto install of language server for VS Code. 
So if you go to VS Code and install the Benton plugin from the marketplace, Benton will automatically detect the correct version of the server it needs for your operating system and download it from the, from the distribution on GitHub. Thank you, and if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to email me at this address. I hope you have a good day.